we'll be looking at designing and deploying experiences specifically for this tutorial with a focus on building headless experiences. In other words, looking at how developers can build and deploy experiences in their technology of choice, being React, Vue, Angular, or whatever technology they'd like, and how they can consume content from Oracle Content Management. Another use case that we find very much in demand with CX content revolves around being able to headlessly publish content to a number of channels. With the advent of headless, we now have multiple channels that our customers engage with, be it mobile, web, uh, chatbot, digital signage, and it has become more and more important to be able to publish content consistently uh, across all of these channels while being able to maintain it centrally. And while the core of the central maintenance can be ensured through the assets UI provided with CX content. It is important, aside from the site builder capabilities dedicated to business users for quickly assembling front ends, to also provide capabilities for developers to quickly spin uh, custom front ends on popular technologies like, for example, React, and being able to uh, publish content to those channels while also uh, having the possibility of amending those front ends to their needs. And CX content also provides that through a dedicated set of uh, sample templates and documentation available from the CX content documentation under headless CMS. Now here, obviously, um, a number of concepts are explained around how headless CMS delivery is being done through CX content and some of the core concepts around how that's achieved. But of special interest are the samples and tutorials templates. And here we can see that for popular technologies such as React and JavaScript, CX content already provides a set of uh, ready-made samples for blogs and image gallery on React, for example, and for blog on JavaScript, as well as a number of other samples which are um, to be released uh, very shortly. And all of these templates are both documented in code and provided as sample source code on GitHub to be cloned and deployed, as well as documented as tutorials using our documentation explaining how these templates can be deployed and how they can be modified. Now let's have a look at the OC React blog sample. And in order to do that, we can simply go onto GitHub and click on the live version of the project to see how that front end would actually look. And we see we've got here basically three categories of blogs and on clicking on one category or another, we get the links to the blogs as tiles that are in that category. Clicking on one blog also leads us to the detail of that blog. And of course, this is not ideally formatted because being a sample, Customers and developers may want to customize their own look and feels, but this provides the base layer that developers can take and customize. Now, underpinning all of this front end is a dedicated repository with a set of content inside of CX content. And of course, this is made available to customers and developers through the CX content developer site, but it can also be uh, customized with sample content. But of course, that will involve changing the actual front end the actual code for the react block sample as well so let's see how we actually deploy this particular uh, react front end onto netlify and then try to modify one of these content items and see if the changes actually reflect so in order to get started all i'll need to do is i'll need to start off by cloning the repository source so i'll just copy the repository url go to my visual studio code and then do a git clone and copy the REPL URL. And you can see that a new OC React block sample node has appeared in my um, workspace and also the cloning has been completed and I now have the full source code for the actual blog. Now, every application that we have as a sample uh, for a custom front end inside of CX content will come with the structure of a starter folder for developers that want to customize the application and a completed folder for users that and developers that just want to deploy the front end as is for perhaps testing or other purposes. So what we're going to do is in this tutorial, we're going to use the completed branch and I'm going to go into the project and also into the completed branch and install the dependencies as a first step uh, using the npm uh, install command. 
Once the dependencies are installed, which may take a few minutes, we can now start configuring our React frontend to link to the CX content instance. And in order to do this, we'll be going into completed branch under source, configuration, and the OC JSON file. And this is a parameter file that stores the server URL, so the host name of the instance that you want to point to, the API version, which in most cases is going to be 1.1, and the channel token, which is the hash of the channel where the content is going to be published. Now, in the documentation, these are clearly documented, and you can look under the Configure Our React Application heading to understand more about this. But in order to retrieve all of these values, we're going to have to go to our actual CX content instance and copy the hostname URL, which we'll be placing under the server URL parameter, as well as the channel token, which we'll be retrieving by looking at what content is published into the OC getting started repository. In order to do that, we're going to go to the assets panel, select one asset and click on channels to see the channel that they're published to. In this case, this is the OC getting started channel. So we can now look under the admin content section under publishing channels and get the channel token for the OC getting started channel, which is listed at the bottom and can be copied using the integrated tooling. And we'll also be placing this under the channel token parameter. Now we're ready to actually build our application and upload it into a GitHub repo for deployment to Netlify. Before we actually uh, deploy our React frontend, we want to create a production-ready minified client bundle, which is an optimized uh, version of the application that is deployment ready. And in order to do that, what we're going to be doing is for our OC React application, the completed version, we're going to be running npm run build, which will be resulting in the folder that you see in here. Now, I've already run the command just so we can have a look at what are the source files generated. And you can see there's a number of CSS and JavaScript chunks and fragments that are essentially part of the output of the build command. And they're an optimized version of the source code to facilitate the actual build and deployment. And once we're actually done with creating the build, we can use the Netlify CLI, uh, which is essentially a node uh, package that can be installed uh, using the node package manager and can be used to deploy custom front ends directly from the CLI within your ID. And if I do Netlify deploy here, I'm actually going to be prompted with options and essentially a, a command line wizard as to how I want to deploy my site. So for example, I can use the arrows to either link this directory to an existing site that I already have deployed or create and configure my new site uh, for what team and potentially in Netlify, I have my particular team created. I can provide it with a name and so on. For the purpose of this training, I won't be going through this particular CLI, but instead what we'll be doing is we'll be using this particular sample that we have created and compiled and built as well. And uh, we'll be uploading it as a repository to GitHub, which is something that I've already done and is uh, available as the OC React blog sample and contains the source code. But bear in mind, it doesn't contain the node uh, modules and it doesn't contain the build because this is all actually done by Netlify behind the scenes. And what we're going to be doing is we're actually just going to be deploying this site directly from GitHub from the Netlify UI. Now I have my GitHub account already integrated and authenticated and authorized. So all I need to do is I need to select from my GitHub account which uh, particular um, repository I want to choose, which code I want to deploy. And I'm going to do the OC React block sample, which is exactly the source code that we have. I'm going to choose the master branch, which is where I have my code for the build command. In my case, to avoid uh, errors uh, with continuous CI CD, I'm going to do the N CI equals before the NPM run build command. And I'm going to also specify the publish directory. In other words, where is the uh, build source code actually outputted? It's in the build folder. So all I'm going to do now is click on deploy site. And then as the site deploys, I'm also able to monitor the progress using the deploy log within Netlify. So we can see that um, the deploy actually starts adding the various dependencies for that particular application with uh, the node package manager. Then moves on to actually verifying the build 
creating the build for the site. The same process that we've actually done in the IDE, only it's done automated in Netlify. And you can see the command that I've actually provided as an argument while I was deploying the site. And then our build is completed and the site is now deployed. And I also get the option to actually preview the site from directly within the deploy log. So I'll click on preview and get redirected to the site. And now we can see that our React blog site is available and it looks just as the one we saw in the sample link provided on the GitHub uh, repository. Now, if we click on each of these categories, we get uh, redirected to additional blog entries and the detail for each blog entry. And if, for example, say we want to modify one of these blog entries, like this pouring just the right cup entry, I can go in and just edit it from content. Add, for example, uh, I don't know, add at the end one paragraph and say this is a change. Great blog. And then I can save it and publish it again to the channel. I can publish that right away. And if I check back into my React blog, I can see that the same changes are now available.